Okay, well, uh, well, welcome back, and we'll start uh, all the uh, new content for uh, after the midterm exams. So uh, I've graded everybody's exams, and your uh, your scores are posted. Uh, you are allowed to look at your exam during office hours. However, if you want to uh, if you want to look at your exam next week or any time after that, um, be sure to send me an email so I know to uh, to bring your exam. Um, otherwise, uh, I'm gonna leave it leave it in my office. I don't have to carry this huge stack to class uh, with me every day. So. Um, let me just give a uh, kind of an overview of where we are headed with the uh, the rest of the course, and uh, we'll we'll talk about how everything uh, fits in together. Okay. Whoa, that is. Okay. okay so um, up until this point. Until the uh, the midterm exam, we've talked about uh, descriptive statistics. Mm -hmm. So this is just what we've covered so far. So descriptive statistics are things like describing a distribution, describing data with uh, terms like um, the mean, median, and mode. or uh, describing the spread and the shape, all of this stuff, okay? So this all goes into this general category of descriptive statistics. We've even talked about um, describing relationships with, uh, so part of that is describing relationships between um, variables. So this is part all part of descriptive statistics, okay? Uh, and then we talked about probability. We have the uh, the rules of probability. So probability we have rules and then we also have probability distributions. Okay, and the, the key probability distributions we covered were the normal distribution, and the binomial distribution. Okay. So this, this is kind of what we've covered so far, and um, and you took a, an exam on this. And from now, we are bringing these two topics together into this realm of inferential statistics. Okay. So, to uh, to bring inferential statistics to life, we have to understand what we call sampling distributions. Which is what we are covering today. And then once we understand sampling distributions, we apply our understanding to confidence intervals, and hypothesis tests. Okay. And so today we're going to cover this topic of sampling distributions. Okay, so let's uh, let's just talk about what what exactly a sampling distribution 
is and what it means for us. So give me a second, let me just save this. It's already November. Can you believe that? <laughs> yeah, it's uh, life is uh, life is hard in uh, the Southland. Okay. Yeah, we'll see if uh, D'Angelo Russell uh, gets into the swing of things here. Oh, is that was that no good? Go back, go back. Sure, go back. They say. Oops. Okay. Okay. How about now? One more moment. One more moment. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. Okay, so let's just kind of, let's talk about the big picture of sampling distributions. Okay, so here's the idea behind a sampling distribution. So if you remember from the beginning, we said, what is statistics all about? What's that? Statistics is about sampling and what? Okay, so statistics, we said one of the, one of the big things or re big reasons why we study statistics is because... Okay, we can, yes, uh, we can make conclusions from limited data. All right, and what does it mean to make conclusions from limited data? Okay, so here, let, let me just kind of write this out. So statistics allow us to understand the world around us, allow us to make conclusions from limited data. And the key idea here is that we have a big population. We can't look at everyone in the population, so we take a small piece called the sample. And based on the sample, we hope to make a conclusion about the population, OK? We can't see everything in the population. Because the population is too big, right? We do observe a sample. based on what we see in the sample. We make a conclusion about the population. OK, I'm hoping this concept sounds familiar. Okay. Usually, the population has an aspect, like a property that we want to know, and that is our population parameter. Okay, so if to um, know about, 
This is called the population parameter. Okay. So this might be, you know, what is the average weight of all elephants? Okay, what is how much does the average elephant weigh? All right? Maybe that's what we want to know. And to get that answer, we would need to look at every single elephant uh, in the world, right? And there, it's just too hard to kind of track down every single elephant, so we can't do that, okay? What we can do is maybe we can gather, uh, you know, find a random sample of 50 elephants or something, okay? And so we want to take the corresponding statistic from our sample. And in that case, that would be the average weight of the 50 element elephants in our sample. And based on what we see in our sample, can we then say something about the population? All right? Does that, I'm hoping that that's OK with everybody? All right, and so, um, so let me just write that down. The population has a property we want to know about, the population parameter, OK? When we look at a sample, we will find the corresponding statistic. Okay. And based on our the um, the st statistic that we find, which is our estimate. Based on our estimate, we might make a conclusion about the population. corresponding statistic, I'll say um, this is an estimate. Or, well, I don't need to say that. Okay. All right, and so let's talk about sampling distributions. This is still just the kind of the big picture of what we're doing in statistics. The key here is that if I were to take another random sample, so let's say I take a random sample of 50 elephants, and if I were to do that again and I take another random sample of 50 elephants, that other random sample is not going to be exactly the same as the first one. And if someone else were to take another sample of 50 random elephants, that person's sample will also be different, okay? So the question is, how much do samples differ from each other, okay? Are, um, so probably no two samples will be exactly the same, but how much are they different from one another, okay? If the, uh, actually I have no idea how much the average elephant weighs. Um, average weight of, we'll, we'll do a male elephant. Male African elephant, okay, because there's all, all kinds. All right, African elephants weigh between 4,000 and 7,000 kilos. So that's, that's a big range, right? 8,800 to 15,800 8, to 15,400. So maybe the average African elephant maybe is, I don't know. We'll split the difference. We'll say um, 12,000 pounds, OK? So it's a big animal. OK, so 12,000 pounds. We'll say that's the average weight. Now, if somebody takes a random sample, they might get an average in their sample to be 10,000 pounds or 11,000 pounds. If somebody else takes an average sample, their take, takes a random sample, their average might be 14,000 pounds or something like that, right? However, so we're expecting different samples to have different averages, but we would not expect any random sample to produce an average of 
1,000 pounds, right? Because that just doesn't seem right. So, so the idea of a sampling distribution is, you know, how much can that average vary from sample to sample? How much can the average of a sample change from one sample to another? Does that concept make sense? That's what a sampling distribution is all about. So a sampling distribution gets at the idea of how much can the average of a sample vary from one sample to another. Okay. So every sample we observe will be a little bit different from each other, but we want to know how much can the sample average vary from one sample to another. This is what the sampling distribution gets at. Are we all with me? OK. Um, we don't always have to be talking about averages. And actually, when we start off in our textbook, we're going to look at sample proportions. So we can talk about proportions. OK, so this, it can also, so if this we're talking about averages. Over here we can say how much can the proportion in a sample spelling this wrong So these, these are kind of the, uh, the big picture ideas of a sampling distribution. Can I flip to the next slide? No, OK. Did everyone have a good weekend? Any parties? Any uh, any good uh, good costumes? Most creative costume you saw? A bird. A bird? <coughs> you what? Oh, that sounds uh, that sounds pretty intense. <laughs> Netflix and chill. Okay. <laughs> Apparently, that has some other kind of meaning these days. Um. <laughs> huh? Overdone. It was overdone. Oh, okay. I dressed up as a stat. A stat? Oh. How did? Oh, okay. <laughs> that would have been. I would have been surprised. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. Well. Uh, all right. Did everybody get this copied down now? Okay. Okay. So. Let's see. Um, just kind of the idea of, so here's um, maybe kind of an example. So let's say I've got a big bucket of M&Ms. That's already, they're already selling holiday everything, right? right. Christmas, this, so, okay, so you buy some um, Christmas M&Ms, okay? or holiday M&Ms, whatever they call them. Holiday M&Ms. OK, and so you know you got this big, this, this is, a, we'll say you buy like the 10-pound bag, and you dump it into, I don't even think they sell 10-pound bags. That's like, um, OK, but all right. So let's say you buy a whole bunch, OK? There's, let's say there's, you're obsessed with, M&Ms and 
you are not worried about diabetes and you get, you know, let's say you dump 40 pounds of M&M candies in here. I, I'm not calling anybody anything here. Um, so we got 40 pounds of M&M candies, okay? And we will say um, we know that exactly, so somehow in our obsessive nature, we've made sure that there is exactly the same number of red and green. So exactly half are red and half are green. Okay, so, so exactly 50% red, 50% green. Okay. However, if we uh, take out a scoop, let's say you reach in there, and somehow you have a, a special scoop that will measure out exactly, um, here's a cup, and you're going to get exactly um, 50, 50 pieces of candy in this cup. Okay. So, you know, the first time you do this, how many uh, red pieces do you think you get? Okay, so maybe we get 25 red candies. And so that turns into, we're going to call a sample proportion, p hat is equal to 25 divided by 50. So my sample proportion is 0.5. Okay. It's my first scoop. Does that sound okay, reasonable to everybody? Okay, we're going to dump this back in because I don't know, this is what we're doing. Okay, and then we, we mix up the bowl again, and I scoop out another 50 pieces of candy. This is my second time. How many pieces of red candy do I get this time? Seven. Seven? Uh, that sounds a little... Okay, so, so maybe, inst maybe instead of 25 red candies, maybe I get 27 red candies, okay? So what is my p hat this time? Okay, 27 over 50, and what is that? Point five four. Yeah, okay. And then we can repeat this, right? A third time, maybe uh, I dump them back and I stir it up and I get uh, 21 red candies. Okay, and so here I get 21 divided by 50, and I get a proportion of 0.42. Sound good? Okay, and so you know here we're just kind of playing around, um, but we can say do this. Um, let's say we do this a thousand times, or maybe 10,000 times, because we've got nothing better to do. So. So every time we're just stirring up the, uh, you know, 40 pounds of M&Ms, and I'm taking a scoop of 50 pieces of candy, and I'm going to count how many are red, okay? Although, um, and I have a little uh, web demo, a little uh, demo on the internet that does this exact thing, except it's not M&Ms, it's Reese's Pieces candies. Um, so Reese's Pieces um, sampling distribution. This is what we want. We want the JavaScript version. OK. You guys see this? OK. And so um, uh, so this is Reese's Pieces. And this is just a little bit. Uh, so the colors are different. So instead of red, we're looking at orange candies. But basically, um, I'm going to just it's dump, we've got orange pieces, and we've got things that aren't orange, yellow and brown. But basically, what we're saying is that half, this is, you can imagine this to be the giant 40-pound tub. 
and uh, and half of the candies in here are orange, the rest are uh, yellow and brown or something like that. Is, is that okay? And so, so in this case, we drew 50 candies, and then the number of orange candies was 28. Okay, and so 28 divided by 50 is. Um, we're going to change this to proportion. It's 56%. Uh, and so we're going to build up a little dot plot. And we're going to put a little dot at 0.56 for 56%. Is that OK? All right, and, and then we can, uh, we can do this again. So it spins around and around. So for those of you who aren't familiar, Reese's Pieces look just like M&M's, except they have peanut butter on the inside. Uh, and that's that, okay. <laughs> and they, they, come in, they come in three colors, and they don't do holiday Reese's Pieces. Um, oh, and, and so in this case, we happen to also get um, 20, 28 um, orange pieces. Let's see. Uh, we do this again, and uh, let's see what we get. This time we get 24, okay? And so... 24 as a proportion would be 24 out of 50 is 48 uh, percent orange or red or whatever we're looking at. Okay, so far so good. Okay, and so and rather than watching this thing go, um, we can just click. So this time we got 56 percent. This time we got 58 percent. And every time I'm clicking, this one only 40 percent were uh, red, and here's 54 percent. Uh, 48. So remember, in the tub is exactly 50%. But every time we're drawing a random sample of 50, we get something a little bit different. Okay? So every time I go, so this time I got 44%, and we're building this up. So we can uh, we can start going, uh, you know, 10 at a time. Okay? And then so we get we did 10 more, and it did this, and uh, and we're adding 10 more dots at a time to our our plot, and we can see just um, so sometimes, you know, this time we got like 70% uh, orange, and this over here we got something down at 30-something percent orange, 34%. But most of the time we're getting something close to the middle, right? Okay, let's, uh, let's just crank this up. We'll do 100. Okay. And, uh, and what do we see? We see most of the time we're getting something around 50%. Uh, sometimes a little bit higher, sometimes a little bit lower. And yes, yeah, sometimes we get uh, an extreme amount of orange, something very high or something very low. Um, but most of the time, we're something around here. Uh, let me just crank this up, and we'll do 1,000 at a time. OK. OK. So this is after 9,000. What, what does this shape look like? Yeah, it looks kind of like the, the normal distribution, right? We've got kind of this nice um, bell curve shape, this normal shape, uh, meaning in the middle, so things around 50%, 48%, 52%, these are the values that are coming up most frequently. Every now and then, we do get something around 60% orange or 60% red or 40%, something um, higher or lower. And then once in a very rare occasion, we get something like 72% red or, you know, 30% red or, you know, something much higher or much lower. We never, uh, in our sample, we've never gotten um, where all of them are, are red or we never got a single sample where none of them were red, okay? And, and we, would, we would expect that if we're stirring up this thing and we're drawing 50 pieces of candy at random, we would never expect one of our samples to be completely one color, right? So that never happened. And, uh, and what we see is we get this normal looking shape, OK? So this is, um, this is one of the uh, neat properties of our sampling distribution, is that if we, um, can I flip to the, uh, the next slide here? is that if we continually take random samples from here, overall, and we keep track of all the different proportions we see, what we're going to see is uh, 
the shape of the different proportions from sample to sample will end up looking like the normal distribution. Okay? So, uh, if we repeatedly take random samples and keep track of the proportions. sample to sample, we will see that the distribution of sample proportions looks like the normal distribution. I want to make sure that this sentence makes sense to everybody. few key things that have to be true for this thing to work, okay? It's not just that you can just reach into a sample and it's going to end up being the normal distribution. There, there's a few key things going on here, okay? So one is, you know, the samples we draw taken randomly. Okay. So these are I guess key requirements. Okay, so the samples we draw are taken randomly, so we can also say they are, you know, simple random sampling. Another key is that our population is big. In uh, in comparison to the sample. So what this means is that the population has to be over 10 times bigger than our sample. Or maybe I should say at least 10 times bigger than our sample. Lastly, our sample itself must be big enough. <coughs> must be, quote unquote, large enough. And in that case, what it means is that we must have at least and quote-unquote successes, and at least 10 failures. Okay. Uh, 
Um, if you don't have the actual sample, it must be that you, or we must expect at least 10 successes. Okay. Expect at least 10 successes and failures. And how do we do that? We do that by checking n times p must be bigger than or equal to 10 and n times 1 minus p must also be bigger than 10. Okay. So I'll let you guys finish writing all of this down. It's either or. Um, here I have it written as P, and that's probably the, the traditional way it's presented. But uh, So if you have P, use P. If you don't have P, use P hat. Okay. Um, so P is preferred. If you don't have P, then use P hat. That's, that's a good question, though. Okay, does everyone have this? No, okay, okay. The failure is the right side? Yeah, you know, it's, it's an arbitrary label. Okay, success and failure is the kind of the terms that they've used in the literature, but it just means um, 10 times it does happen and 10 times it doesn't happen. So in our case with the M&Ms, we're talking whenever I take um, a scoop of candies, I have to expect at least 10 to be red and 10 not to be red. Or Reese's Pieces, I need to expect at least 10 to be yellow and 10 not to be yellow. It doesn't matter what we call a success and what we call a failure. So, um, a scoop of <coughs> a scoop of fifty candies is big enough because we're expecting about half to be red and half to be not red. So we're expecting about twenty-five and twenty-five. But a scoop of twelve would not be enough because twelve we're expecting half to be red. So in that case, we're expecting only six to be red and where we would expect half not to be read. So I'll, I'll, I'll write this down. Um, OK, next slide OK? All right, so let's go through and we'll talk about our M&M example and see if that matches, if it passes all of our criteria. OK, so our first criteria was it had to be a random sample. Um, when we talked about it, did we say that we are drawing the samples at random? Yes or no? no. Yeah. Um, so we used a scoop, but we, we stirred up the bowl of candies. So, so stirring up the bowl of candies should give us a pretty good mix. And so taking a scoop out of a stirred up bowl can be considered random. Okay. So we take um, a scoop of 50 candies out of the bowl. Okay, we stir the bowl. So it can be considered random. Okay. So we need a big population in comparison to our sample. Is our population at least 10, <coughs> 10 times bigger than our sample? I have 40 pounds of M&Ms. I'm taking a scoop of 50 candies. Is the pop population at least 10 times bigger? Yes, right? 
because uh, unless you know the 50 candies weigh more than four pounds, and yeah, unless I'm taking more than four pounds of M&Ms, I'm not taking more than 10% of the population. Okay, so population is 50 pounds or 40 pounds. I don't remember what I said. Population is 40 pounds of candy. Well, you know, my sample is 50 pieces. Okay, so 40 pounds of candy, you know, 50 times, 50 pieces times 10 would be equal to 500 pieces, and 40 pounds of candy is more than 500 pieces, right? Lastly, we want to make sure we have a large sample. Okay, so how big is my sample? How many pieces? So n is 50. What proportion in the uh, population is red? P is 0.5, right? So our sample is 50 pieces. Okay, fifty percent of the candies are red. Okay, so we expect fifty times point five, twenty five to be red. And fifty times 1 minus p, 1 minus 0 0.5, which is also 50 times 0 0.5. We expect 25 to be not red. Okay, so both numbers, n times p and n times 1 minus p, are both bigger. greater than 10, greater than or equal to 10. So our sample is large enough. <coughs> so far so good? Anyone confused? Okay, so what we're doing is we're just making sure that these conditions are met because if these conditions are met, then the sampling distribution will look like the normal distribution. What exactly is a sampling distribution again? Yeah, it's, it's the distribution of the different sample proportions that we can see. From sample to sample, every time we take different samples, we, might, we could get a different p hat. And the sampling distribution is the distribution of the different p hats that we could observe. Can we see big p hats or little p hats? If the giant bowl is exactly 50% red and 50% green, when I take random samples out of that bowl, could I get 70% red? <coughs> it could happen, but it doesn't happen very often. Okay? Could I get 52% red? Yes, that happens quite a bit. Could I get 100% red? Technically, it's possible, but it never happened in the 10,000 times we tried, okay? So meaning, if it is possible, it would be an incredibly unlikely uh, occurrence, okay? Could we get 40% red? Yes, that happens uh, not all the time, but it happens quite regularly.
Okay, so the sampling distribution tells us how often we might get different sample proportions. Or we could apply the same thing to averages. Could our average be this number? Sure. Could our average be this other number? Maybe, maybe not, okay? So, um, so that is our, so these are the conditions that need to apply uh, in order for us to say that the sampling distribution looks normal, okay? So this is, these are known as conditions for the central limit theorem. So I'm going to write this on the, uh, the next um, page, okay? Okay, so if those three conditions are met, we can apply what we call central limit theorem. Okay, and the, the big picture of the central limit theorem is that the sampling distribution looks much like, or I'll say looks like, the normal distribution. Okay, so I'm going to just pull up our, our diagram from this, uh, this exercise here. this in here. Okay, and so what this says is this part here This looks like the normal distribution. Okay, this is our the sampling distribution. This shows us how often we got, you know, how often our different samples had different sample uh, proportions. This is, you know, one random sample. So you don't have to redraw all of this in your notes. Um, I'm gonna, I'll post this. I'll, I'm gonna post my slides online. So this just shows that one random sample ended up with 23 orange pieces. which means p hat is equal to 0.46, 23 divided by 50. Okay. So I hope, I hope this demonstration makes sense in that we can randomly, continue to randomly draw pieces of candy. And in this scenario, we got 23 orange pieces out of 50 pieces total. And so in that case, 46% were orange. And so that means a tiny little um, tick mark goes right here. And so building up this thing, this looks like the normal distribution. 
Now, why are, why do we have lines? Why is this not like a smooth? Why is it not a smooth shape? Why why are there only uh, why are there bars? There's bars at you know fifty percent, fifty two percent, fifty four percent. There's no bar at fifty one percent, or you know fifty point. You know there's there's a bar at 0 0.50 and a bar at 0.52, but there's no bar at 0.51 or 0.513 or 0.51378. Why not? How, how are we calculating um, the values, the p hats? So we're taking um, 50 pieces of candy, right? And so to get this p hat, what did I do? I did 23 divided by 50. Okay. And so because of that, you know, if I do 23 divided by 50, I get 0.46. I could get 24 pieces of red, uh, orange candy. 24 divided by 50 would give me what? 0.48. Okay, could I ever get a 0.47? No, because to get 0.47, I would need to have 23 and a half orange candies, and and we don't we don't do that. Okay, you either have 23 orange candies or you have 24 orange candies. You, you can't uh, you can't have a half. What's that? Yeah, we're not splitting we're not splitting them in half. Okay. Huh? <laughs> some, some are, but they're gonna they're gonna count as whole things, right? Just like, you know, when you ask somebody how many children you have, they give you a whole number answer. They might not even genetically be theirs, right? They could be like, uh, or I don't know, how many siblings do you have, right? So I, I get with siblings, you you can have half siblings, but you don't say, oh, I've got um, two and a half siblings because my oldest brother came from my dad's first marriage or something. You don't, you don't say stuff like that, right? You either say I have two or I've got three. Um, you might say I've got three, and then if you're not on good terms, you might say, but one of them is this or, you know, I mean, but you don't say uh, I've got two and a half siblings or something like that. that um, that's not cool, right? So, um, so in the same way here, you know, it's not like our... Um, our M&Ms we care, or Reese's Pieces we care about hurting their feelings or anything, but you, you can either only have 23 pieces or 24, okay? And so you can only have 46% or 48%. You can't have something in between. And so that's why we're getting these uh, vertical bars, okay? But overall, the shape is still very much like the, uh, the normal distribution, okay? Is that okay? All right, and so we can then, because we understand how the normal distribution works, or we should know how the normal, distribu or normal distribution works, we can start applying this to, uh, to answer questions about the distribution, okay? So every normal distribution is defined by two quantities, two numbers. What are those two numbers that define a normal distribution? So if I were to ask you a normal distribution problem and I said something like, what percentage of elephants weigh more than uh, 12,000 pounds? To answer that question, you would need, and I said, uh, the weight of elephants follow the normal distribution with what and what? Mean and standard deviation, okay? So if we want to use the normal distribution here, we need to know the mean and the standard deviation, okay? So for uh, sampling distributions of proportions, We say the sampling distribution of p hat 
comes from the normal distribution with mean equal to p, which is the population mean, uh, population proportion. And we have standard deviation equal, and it's just this a little bit ugly quantity, p times 1 minus p divided by n, square, uh, and the entire thing in the square root. Okay. And so just to be clear, you know, are the quantities, OK? P is the pop proportion in the population, population proportion. P hat is the proportion we see or might see in a sample. The standard deviation of a sampling distribution is also known as the standard error. So does everyone have this written down? <laughs> OK. So let's use this for our uh, M&Ms example again. Okay, so here I've got the giant bucket of M&Ms, and we say half of the M&Ms in the bucket are red. Okay, and we are taking random samples. of 50 candies, uh, 50 pieces of candy. Okay. So what is the sampling distribution of p hat? Does this question even make sense? What's the sampling distribution of p hat? So p hat, what is p hat? Proportion, Proportion of what? Of our sample. So that's saying every time I take 50 random pieces of candy, 
I might see a different p hat, right? I might get 50% in my sample. I might get 52% in my sample, OK? We want to know, well, what does that distribution look like? That's the what is the sampling distribution of the different p hats I could get. Okay, and so what do we know? We know the, um, this situation that we've set up passes the three conditions for the central limit theorem, right? We, um, so this scenario meets the three conditions for the central limit theorem. What were those conditions again? The three conditions were it has to be a random sample. OK, we have a big population. It's more than 10 times our sample. And our sample is large, so we have a large sample, right? So these three conditions are met. We've already discussed this on a previous slide. Okay? And so we said when the three conditions for the central limit theorem are met, the p hat, the sampling distribution, comes from what kind of distribution? From a normal distribution. Okay, and what are the uh, properties of this normal distribution? The mean is equal to, should just be on your previous page here. The mean is equal to P, the silence is breaking my heart. Um, so P hat comes from a normal distribution. The mean is P, and what is P equal to? Proportion of the population, and what is the proportion of our population? 0. 0.5. Half are red, right? So p is equal to 0. 0.5. And the standard deviation, or we might call it the standard error, is equal to this quantity, p times 1 minus p over n, right? So in this case, I have what I have p is 0. 0.5 times 1 minus 0. 0.5 divided by what is n my sample size 50 I'm drawing 50 pieces of candy so my n is 50 okay and what does this quantity turn out to be so I'm going to do 0. 0.5 times parentheses 1 minus 0.5, close parentheses, divided by 50. I get 0 0.005, and I'm going to take the square root of that. Square root of my answer, and I get 0 0.0707. Trying to Trying to build this up where you guys can still follow me. And are you guys still following me? OK. All right, and so we have, so what this says basically is that p hat, do you remember this notation, comes from normal distribution with mean 0.5 and standard deviation or standard error, because it's now a sampling distribution, 0.0707. Okay. All right, and so now we can ask normal distribution questions based on this. Okay. So starting here, we can now say so. Oh, oh, oh sorry. Please go back. All right. Now we can say please go back. 
we'll uh, we'll make sure we're all we're all good. No worries. How do you get 0.5? So remember, we're talking about our um, the population and the proportion. Okay. So here we're talking about what we want to know is, you know, if I draw a random sample of 50 pieces of candy, you know, what proportion in my sample will be red? Okay. So 50 pieces of candy. So we're saying half of the M&Ms in the bucket are red. So the proportion in our population that's red is 50%, and that's P, right? So here, I'll, I'll write this. This means what proportion in the entire bucket, in the population, that's what we want to know. What proportion in the entire population is red? Okay, and what we said is that in the bucket, 50% are red, and that's why we have P equal to 0.5. Is, is that, does that make sense? Yeah, but how did you, how, what's your order for the uh, probability and then adding in the parentheses? So, so this, um, so I think I covered this notation, right? That, um, we can write this. This is kind of the shorthand way of saying um, normal distribution with mean, mu, yeah. and standard deviation sigma. Yeah. That that sounds familiar, right? Mm -hmm. So, so that's all I'm saying here. Oh. Okay, and this is for the sampling distribution of p hat, meaning every time I take a random sample of 50 pieces of candy out of this giant bucket. I could get different p hat values. And because I could get different p hat values, I want to know the distribution. And I'm saying that distribution of the different p hat values I can get is actually coming from a normal distribution. OK? So I'm hoping we have all of this written down. One more, more, more minute. And one more question. So what does that represent? Yeah, that, that's the standard deviation of our sampling distribution, OK? So again, the sampling distribution is all the different possible p hat values I can get, OK? And that in of itself has its own standard deviation, OK? That so itself has it. Yeah. That in itself that, has its because, because I could get, every time I draw a different sample, I could get a different p hat. And rather than just saying the p hats are all over the place, we can say, no, the p hats actually behave like a normal distribution with this sampling, uh, with this standard deviation. Okay, and when we apply a standard deviation to a sampling distribution, it's called the standard error. It's it's sometimes called that. Yeah. Yes. This is the calculation that we see here is the calculation for the standard deviation of a sampling distribution when we apply the central limit theorem. Okay? I know it's a lot, all right? So I've been trying to get us here piece by piece. Um, but, but it's a lot. Yeah, go ahead. So the, the, part, of the part of the formula that is 1 minus the Yeah, it's, it's just p times 1 minus p over divided by n. Um, I, I would say it's beyond the scope of this course to explain how we get there. It's, if 
we wanted to talk about it, you can look up the properties of repeated Bernoulli trials okay, so to get I'm there. But what does the one represent? If I might it doesn't represent anything. I see. Okay, this is just the formula you use okay. to get the standard deviation okay. for a sampling distribution. Right, okay, and I'm not going to quiz you like no, how. No. Why is it this way? Okay, it's just I'm just going to tell you this is the formula you need to know okay. to get the standard deviation of a sampling yep. distribution. Okay. Yes, another question. Well, well I, just, I just said in the bucket, half are red. It could be, you know, maybe someone, somebody, I don't know, wanted to set up their bowl differently and only 20% in the bucket are red, okay? And it's still, in that case, it would be 20% red. But we'll, we'll try mo mo more examples here, okay? So, okay, so continuing off of this example, we are saying P hat comes from the normal distribution with mean 0.5 and standard deviation 0 0.0707. So now I can say something like, if I take a random sample of 50 candies from the bucket, okay, and then I count how many pieces are red. Okay. What is the probability that the proportion of red candies I get, of red candies, is over, uh, we'll say, 56% red. Okay. So here I'm going to say, I'm going to take a random scoop of 50 pieces of candy. I'm going to count how many in my sample are red. And I want to know what's the probability that the proportion in my sample turns out to be more than 56% red. Does that question make sense? Okay, can we answer this now? Okay, well, uh, I asked it, so yes, we can answer it. Um, okay, and we can answer it because we know p hat comes from a normal distribution. So this is now just like a problem that you guys had to answer on the midterm, and um, some of you guys did very well on the midterm. Some of you guys did not. Um, and so here, we're just saying you've got a normal distribution, the mean is 0.5, the standard deviation is 0 0.0707, and we're going out to where? 0 0.5656%, .56, and we want to know, what is this area over here? Okay. So how, do we, how are we going to do this? What's our first step in answering a normal model problem? What do we find? We find the z-score, right? So we go, to get my z-score, what do I use? <coughs> 0.56 minus 0.5 divided by 0 0.0707, OK? So don't let the fact that we're dealing in decimals throw you off, OK? Because sometimes students try to change this to like 56 and 50 and stuff. Don't do that, OK? Just leave it in decimals. Don't let the fact that they're decimal points scare you. It, they're just numbers. You've got a mean. You've got a value. You've got a standard deviation. So you do 0.56 minus 0.5 divided by 0 0.0707. And so I get z equal to 0 0.8487. So this rounds off to, what, 0 0.85? Right? 
So I look up z equal to 0 0.85. All right, and what is the value I get when I look up z equal to 0 0.85? 0 0.85, I get 0 0.8023. OK, so we look up z equal to 0 0.85. We get 0 0.8023. Is that the answer to my question? No. What, what is the answer to my question? 1 minus. 1 minus this, right? So 0 0.8023 is the area to the left of 0.56. Right, so now we're I've converted this to 0.85 on z score. z is equal to 0 and z equal. So over here, this is going to be 1 minus 0 0.8023. I get 0.19. 7, 7. So what is the probability that the proportion of red candies is over 56% red? About 27%. Point 0.1977. Right. So that says, okay, you've got to, so let's just Step back and make sure we, uh, we understand what's going on. Well, first of all, I'll make sure you guys finish writing. And I just want to step back and let us understand what we're talking about here. Okay? So the idea is I've got this big bucket, 40 pounds of candy. In this bucket, we know that exactly half are red and half are green. But we've mixed them all up. We've mixed up this big bucket so that but half are red and half are green. I'm taking a scoop of 50 pieces of candy. If I take a scoop of 50 random pieces of candy and I dump them out and I count them how many are red, there is about a 20% chance that the proportion of red pieces I get is over 56% red. Okay? So meaning, so... Should you buy that? Yeah, sure. Okay. But, um, but I, so I just want to make sure that makes sense, okay? So I'm taking a random scoop of 50 pieces of candy, okay? The pro probability that over 56% of my sample of 50 pieces being red is 19.1977, so about 20%, 0.1977, okay? Does, conceptually, does that make sense? All right. So if I were to ask, what's the probability that over 60% are red. Okay, you don't do don't do any math, but is that number going to be bigger or smaller than 0 0.1977? Smaller. smaller, right? Because it seems if half the candies in the bucket are red, it seems more unlikely that I'm going to get now 60% or more red, okay? On the other hand, if I said what's the probability that I get over 52% red? What do you think that answer is going to be? <coughs> It's going to be more than 19 percent. Okay, so I guess I'll, I'll write that interpretation down. Okay, so just kind of a recap. I have a big bucket of candy. Half of the candies are red. So p is equal to 0 0.5. I mix up the candies. I mix them. I mix them. I take a random sample of 50. Okay. It, uh, I then count the proportion, or calculate the proportion of red candies. Candies in my sample. Okay, The probability that the, pro 
that my proportion is over 56% red is about 20%, or to be precise, 0.1977. Okay, so I'll let you guys write that down, and then uh, and why don't we take a, why don't we take a break here? Ten minutes here.